Why cities need cycling infrastructure? City in general is such a system in which everyone constantly needs to move somewhere, to work, to study, to the store or somewhere else. And there are many people in the cities. So to make cities live normally, it is very important to give people as many different mobility options as possible, and it is desirable to do it economically and ecologically. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was not yet clear where things would turn, and in cities public and private transport as well as bicycles coexisted quite peacefully. But then the private car gradually pulled the blanket over itself. Everyone really liked the idea of having their own personal travel capsule that protects you against rain and snow, can carry some loads and allows you to choose your route by yourself. In a galaxy, fine car interiors are now within the reach of everyone. And of course, like all Fords, the galaxy has many built-for-people comforts. But quite quickly, it turned out that if a lot of people get into cars, they cease to fit on the streets that simply were not designed for this. And then, of course, people began to rebuild their cities to meet the needs of cars for more lanes, parking lots and intersections. It seemed very logical, but gradually it turned out that it does not get any better even if you turn the city into a pure intersection among the parking lots. By the way, lots of American cities as a result turned into this, but the problem of traffic jams still wasn't solved. But now you can move there only by a car. <laughs> People do this every day? Drive to work at 8 miles an hour? Pretty much. I'd have to kill myself. <laughs> That's when the term induced demand appeared, the essence of which is that the more convenience you create for something, the more people will use it. You make city convenient for cars, people switch to cars in mass. In my opinion, this is quite logical, although Elon Musk does not agree. And that's weird, because his electric cars created a mass demand for them, which would not have existed if there were no electric cars themselves. And having understood all this, in some cities they thought, hmm, so if we'll give people an alternative to cars, they will start using it and traffic jams will decrease? Sounds like a plan. Let's try. And they began to revive public transport and create infrastructure for cycling. Bicycle is the most accessible way of personal movement, the only cheaper way is walking. Cycling infrastructure is also much cheaper to build than the car infrastructure. But at the same time, it allows you to move much faster and for longer distances than on foot. To walk 5 kilometers, you will have to stomp for about an hour, which will be unacceptable for most of people. But on a bike, it will take you about 20 minutes to ride and that's already quite okay. And this ride is also a bonus session of physical training, which will be useful for your muscles and heart, especially if you have a sedentary work. Bicycles doesn't need fuel, they doesn't pollute the air and make no noise. Of course, there are also electric bikes and scooters that need to be charged, but still, everyone who switches to them from a car contributes to the improvement of urban ecology. Finally, a bicycle is much smaller than a car, so mass transfer of people from cars to bikes reduces traffic jams because the same number of people will take up much less space on the street. And it will be much easier to park them because 10 bicycles can be placed on one car parking space. Long story short, there are quite a lot of advantages. But if there are still no bicycle traffic jams in your city, there are the reasons for this. In general, there is a whole wagon of explanations what's wrong with the bikes, but most of them are more like excuses than uh, real reasons. Well, yes, it could rain or even snow and in such weather riding a bike is not so pleasant. But in Amsterdam or Copenhagen the weather is also so-so, it rains a lot but still people use bikes in mass. And in Finland or Sweden there are very bicycle-friendly cities beyond the Arctic Circle, where snow and frost do not interfere with this. There is a very interesting video about it on my favorite Not Just Bikes channel and I strongly recommend you to watch it too. Therefore, the climate itself is not a problem. You just need to dress properly, build good infrastructure and maintain it in the right way.
Maybe your city is quite a hilly, but the world is full of cities with no less terrain where there are lots of cyclists. In such a cases, electric bikes and scooters where you don't need to pedal at all are a very relevant thing. And in some cities there are also such things like this platform for bikes that cling to the trams in Stuttgart. This is one of my favorites. It sounds like a driver is some kind of separate biological species, something like a centaur that simply cannot exist apart from the car. Of course, this is not the case. There are no specific drivers or cyclists. There are just a people who need to move around the city and do what they need. And each of them chooses a more convenient and affordable way of moving. Of course, there is some part of people for whom it is essential to drive a car but they are clearly not 100%. The others just choose a more convenient option for themselves among available ones. Buses are overcrowded, biking without bike lanes is dangerous and the car has a comfortable seat, air conditioning and your favorite music inside. Hmm, what a difficult choice. Therefore, no one needs to transfer literally all the drivers to bicycles. And this is not real at all. But to give a viable alternative to those for whom it's not essential to go by car, that's the real task. There is also another version of this excuse. We don't have that kind of mentality. It sounds like all the Dutch people are genetically inclined to ride bikes everywhere, but we are not like that. But this is how Amsterdam looked like in 1960s. The Amsterdamers of that time, maybe just like you, drove everywhere by car in mass. The streets were stocked in traffic jams and city authorities planned to demolish all districts and build the highways. They even invited American engineers, but were able to stop in time and go another way. Now Amsterdam is a city with excellent public transport and cycling infrastructure. Of course, a lot of things had to be done for this, including changing people's habits, which is much more more difficult than rebuilding the streets. So there is no any special anti-cycling mentality. But there are cities where it's inconvenient and dangerous to ride a bike. And there are people who are used to it and for whom it is difficult to imagine that it could be different. And this have to be changed.